Welcome to Film in 5D, the show that records everything film with the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock, and this week we get around to a slightly more intriguing topic, ADR. ADR? Yep, ADR. Is it like some DDR expansion or something? Pretty much. Really? Yeah, we'll find out right now. All right, so ADR, also known as automated dialogue replacement, refers to when an actor or actress re-records their dialogue in post-production to correct for bad audio quality from the original take. In fact, in my opinion, this is probably the most significant factor when it comes to good or bad audio in independent productions. Everyone knows that you want to get your shotgun mic as close as possible to your subject, without getting it in frame, of course. And if you have a boom operator, this is achieved relatively easily. You see, a shotgun mic like this Rode Video mic right here is actually designed to cut out all surrounding noise and only pick up the sound that's coming from in front of it. In fact, the polar pattern of this mic is a V shape. However, even the most expensive shotgun mics, upwards of $1,000 and even $2,000, will pick up ambient sounds that will ruin your dialogue. Now, there are several factors that will ruin your on location audio, especially things like wind, cars, other vocals nearby, dogs barking, etc. There are some things that can be fixed in posts, like removing the droning wind sound or even cell phone beeps, etc. However, you always run the risk of distorting your actor or actress's dialogue if you try to remove too much, which is never a good thing. So this is where we turn to ADR. In fact, most Hollywood films, upwards of 70% actually, use ADR for high budget films. Next time you watch The Lord of the Rings, for example, play a close attention to the actors and actresses lips, and you'll notice that most of the dialogue was actually dubbed in post. This is much less common among independent films, and one of the main reasons we as the viewer are able to discern the difference between Hollywood and independent films. The simple fact is, you can record the cleanest audio possible in a studio setting, and then add ambient sounds in post, like cars, wind, birds chirping, etc. This way, you have separate tracks for everything and have control over all the levels and dynamics of each sound individually. Now, I'll be using the Yeti Pro USB microphone from Blue to do my ADR. I reviewed this mic last week if you're interested. However, the Zoom H4n works just as well in USB mode. You'll want to be using a microphone that can plug in via USB so that you can record directly on your timeline. I find that this helps if the actor or actress who is recording can both hear and see the original. If you have an H4n, then you're already set to record into most programs. I prefer to use Adobe Audition for ADR. Not only is it a great program, but it works seamlessly with Premiere, which I use to edit my videos. Once you have a final cut of your project with the bad audio, click the Edit tab and scroll down to Edit in Adobe Audition and click Sequence. This will create a new multi-track project for you in Audition, and the cool thing about doing it this way is that it also imports your video track so that you can use it as a reference while recording. Once you're in Audition, or whatever audio recording program you use, make sure that your hardware is being recognized in the Preferences Audio Hardware. Also, be sure to check your sample and bit rates. Then click on over to the multi-track session where you'll see the video track you imported along with the original audio. Highlight the blank track that you wish to record on, click the R to enable recording, and then press record. The idea here is for your actor or actress to listen to the original track a few times and then do their best to mimic their dialogue exactly. I usually have my actors take it one line at a time until each of the lines sync up as best as possible. Audition has a tool for ADR to better sync up your clips, like if your actor or actress was going at a different speed at the beginning of the clip than they were at the end, you can sync up the entire clip just using this tool. Now, recording ADR with someone who's monotone would be very easy. The problem is, most people don't speak like this. Their voices will rise and fall and have a great deal of dynamic range. You should be ready for this and adjust levels on the fly. That way, when you're in post, you won't have to raise or lower your gain by too much. We recently shot a sketch for next week. I purposefully used the camera audio only. Let's listen in. Those new iPhone commercials. You know, the ones with Siri. Make fun of iPhone commercials. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that would be fun and easy. So, this obviously needs to be replaced. Let's hop on over to our studio for a bit and give you a look in our ADR session. All right, so right here we have the MacBook Pro and we got plugged into it the Blue Yeti Pro microphone, the USB one that we reviewed last week. And as you can see, it's plugged in via USB. Colton's looking at an image of himself saying the line. And we're just taking it one line at a time. I said an in and out point for, for his line basically. And he's gonna just take that one line until he gets it perfect. And then when we start recording, he'll give me a thumbs up when, when it's a good one. And then we'll go ahead and review it. And so I just, like right now, I'm just having him listen to it over and over again so he can just get it in his head. Whoa, wait, wait. 
So you're telling me you were able to convince a judge that you actually own the original patents to all the crap? So Colton's actually looking at Adobe Audition right now. He got a little clip in the bottom corner. And so you can actually see himself, which, you know, for most people it helps to see yourself rather than hear yourself that way you can get your timing a little bit better. And uh, we're just looping play playback with in and out points. And we keep recording over on a multi-track on the, over the same clip until, you know, we get a, a good one. So as you can see, we know, we got a mic stand here, we got set, you know, set up. Um, we have a pop filter, which I talked about in the review. It's just helping remove the sibilance in his P and S sounds. Um, we actually go to a studio when we actually do real ADR. Right now, this is just for demonstration purposes and for the show. We're actually doing the ADR right now for the Mac vs. PC sketch for next week. Just, you know, a nice little conversation piece to show you how ADR can be done with two people and stuff. So, um, we usually we go to a studio where we actually have one of those blockers for us and so yeah yeah so for your next short film definitely look into doing some ADR I mean even if you're just using an H4M which most independent filmmakers seem to have these days it's only 300 bucks and it's really great for two system sound talked about it in a previous episode just use one of those as a USB mic plug it right in your computer bring your laptop with you on location or wherever you want to do the ADR with your actors or actresses and you know, it'll give you much better audio. You'll have so much more control of things like ambient sounds. You can just add those in later and your levels will be so much better. I mean, that's the pitfall of independent film. Everybody tries, even with, like I said, with great mics, people try to get on location sound. It just never works. Now, 30% of the time you'll find that a line was just fine. Like maybe people were yelling or something. And those lines end up usually end up being okay because their voices are more likely to cut through all the ambient sounds if they're yelling. But if they're very quiet or they're whispering, you want to be in a controlled location. You know, more controlled than my kitchen, like a studio location or, I don't know, a, a, a enclosed room where there's like no sounds whatsoever. We have open windows here and stuff, so this doesn't count. But like I said, if you can rent out a studio, I and mean, we actually have access to a studio, but if you can rent out a studio, that would be great. If you can get one of those shields with the absorbers for the sound, that would also be awesome. Also be awesome. That's that's an interesting saying. But anyways, so just think about that. Try to get some ADR. Our next short film, we're going to do pure ADR just to see how it goes and see how much better. I've actually never done ADR for a short film. Um, I wish I did it for my last short film, Death. There was definitely a time where you couldn't really hear on location at the graveyard. But there you go. So good luck and uh, hope this helps. So that's it for this week. If you have any questions about ADR or any other filmmaking topics, send us an app mentioned to our Twitter page at twitter.com forward slash filming 5 d or you can post on our Facebook wall at this link here. We'll be back next week with a completed sketch after it has been given the ADR treatment. You know, I'm a little disappointed there was no dancing throughout that. You want me to dance? Yes, I would like that. Okay, I'll do it over here. That is cheating. Yeah, but have you seen the new iPhone 5? It's got a bigger screen, it's more responsive, it's like so much better. And now you can pay an extra $30 to transition to the new Docker interface? Exactly. <laughs> Docker interface. I'm not feeling the chemistry right now anyways.